Love to mess with. <laughs> um, I will, you know, I know that he's going to come in after me and record maybe a day, maybe a week later. Uh, if I leave something in his pre-roll, which is what he hears right before his cue, uh, to kind of get him in, into the, the moment of the scene, uh, instead of the line is written, he'll hear me say something in, hey, Todd, back <laughs> then.
I don't know why, but he kind of reminded me of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am really, really tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of just started buffing me up because then all I could picture was you ice skating. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
tell or afraid of public characters. I mean, I think that's, you learn a lot from the people you work with the most, I find. And so I'm a huge fan um, of a lot of people. In terms of uh, someone I've never actually gotten to work with, but someone I know fairly well and have met him at numerous times, his whole approach to his fans and to his supporters is amazing. And I've learned a lot from Steve Bloom. Absolutely, he's an astonishing actor. I mean, he's got a very unique voice, but despite this being such a unique voice, it's so it's so different every time he uses it. Like he's, he's an actor uh, in the sense that I think all of us strive to be the characters. You get the voice actor playing this character, and you just fall in love or compelled in some other way by the character. And so I was always really a fan of William before I had any time getting in this industry. And so when I got a chance to meet him at a con about five or six years. Uh, I was nervous. I thought, oh my god, I hope he's not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> because you never know, I mean, right? You know, we've all met people that we looked up to on a menu a couple on a bad day. And my god, you're so nervous with me. And they're like, oh, you're a little jerk. Um, mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. I have my bad days with people stealing my cookies. <laughs> Wow, the worst one. 
and the, the rainbow hair, demon mask, the big cartoon gloves, and the hula hoop waistline, and the pop pop button. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And of course, I see them about 20 yards, 20 odd yards away, and I react. I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god. Because <laughs> now they're like, oh, oh, well. <laughs> so for like a good hour or two, bastards kept following us every. <laughs> get in line for like, you know, for a hundred houses, and be like, don't turn around, don't turn around. <laughs> Just far enough away, <laughs> like the twins in, in uh, like The Shining. So I was doing the deal with this crap all night, and you know, just being just, just I was still I was drunk, <laughs> rather, and, and getting upset. And I have, you know, like most people, when you're in panic mode, you have the big fight or flight response. You either run for your life or you just turn ludicrously windily. <laughs> get something and don't die. I was in line for some lemon ice. My friends were like, maybe this is over a little bit embarrassing. I was like, it's not going to make a difference if I'm sober. <laughs> so, they're there, about 20 feet away or something. And they keep looking. And finally, you know, I'm here, I was over there, let's say, and I finally take one last look and I'm just like, knowing they're back there, not being able to see them is worse. <laughs> so I take a look and then that's worse. And I was like, okay, one more time, maybe they're gone, and they're not gone, and then one of them just like, made eye contact, right at the same exact time. <laughs> he pulls one of these and just got to get like a little horn on his belt, and like, happy. <laughs> Thank you. 
part is, but I guess the part I find has been really, really wanting to hear you say, what was it? I was really going to help the plot learner in the back of the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> First of all, you can't ask you have to order to that. <laughs> I order you to say, I am, essentially, one hell of a butler in Sebastian's voice. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, they, they stumbled into the TARDIS and said, well, you're not doing your average. So I'm like, Doctor, our little friend, <laughs> but so he was so he played very stern, very comfy. What is Chopper came on and Chopper was like the crazy uncle we all know and love that shows up at your birthday party with like ridiculous gifts that make no sense. Like, Here's kayak lessons. <laughs> Thank you. I'm eight. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of, everything is just wonderful. And, and he wears Trouton, uh, whereas Hartnell, excuse me, more, he didn't like the sci-fi angle quite so much. He was much more old theater, you know, doing Alice. He, he much preferred the costume the dramas. Let's go back in time and visit the Victorian era or, or the Aztecs or what have you. Trouton, on the other hand, was like, oh my god, yes, let's do monsters. Let's do monsters and let's go to ice tennis and let's tie them in all of it. So the show, as what we know of now, really kind of began to take shape under Troughton, under Troughton as the doctor first, and so Troughton again. So I, I go back to that era as having given some of the really great tropes of Doctor Who that still persist 50, almost well, you know, 50 years ago. So Troughton, definitely Troughton. I met a guy. <laughs> Anybody's ever asked you? Oh, and here's uh, another weird question. What, what do you smell like? <laughs> Come <laughs> on. 